Good morning, Impact Church. We're excited to see you guys today. Will you stand and worship with us? We are going to bring the Spirit into this place and let heaven invade.
bless you, Lord. Father, we are excited today. I, I'm excited because the first service was really good. I'm excited. Lord, I bless you. I thank you for the richness of your presence. I thank you for the richness of your wonderful presence. I thank you for the freshness that is being poured right now from your throne. I thank you that you are engaging us in a fresh way. Our hearts are wide open today and saying, Heavenly Father, we, we want to lay hold of everything. I don't, I don't want a piece of the menu. I don't want a, a little hors d'oeuvre or something. From, I want to come and I want to sit at your table. I want to feast of what you provided today. So we come to eat deeply, to drink deeply of your goodness and your grace. So Father, come, sit with us, manifest your goodness in every way. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. And everybody Amen. said, hey. <laughs> hey, we'll let you grab a seat just for a second. Just for a second. How are you, Pastor Cheryl? You all right? Well, all of a sudden I was out there greeting people and making sure I got the names correct. And yeah. then I heard your voice and... Whoa. You got somewhere to be, honey. Did yeah. you feel the glory when no, you heard no, my I voice? No, no, I just felt dizzy. You heard my voice? No. You felt the power from on high? No. No. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> that was funny. What was it? <laughs> Good morning, Impact Church. How y'all doing today? Good morning, Impact Church. Good morning. How y'all doing today? Hey. Woo. There we go. There we go. Don't, All worry, right. don't worry about the Maple Leafs. It's okay. They got, got Boston oh, right where we want them. Got them right where we want them, right? They're overconfident Enough now. Enough with the Maple boom. Leafs. Hey, boom. It's over. Well, it's not over. I don't want to speak anything negative. <laughs> All right. So I just want to bring your attention to a few things in the bulletin. Um, I hope you, if you're on the email list that you subscribe and that you uh, open Kelly's emails when they come and tell you what's going on during the week. But Who we opens Kelly's emails? Who opens them? Three people. But anyways, we put it on a bulletin for those of you who are, you know, answering your emails. Anyways, we've got a couple of big things happening between May and June. We've got so. Sip Swap Snack May 4th. Come on. So tickets are on sale. Woohoo! Yep. Uh, before service and after service. But we need some people to start bringing in their Come stuff on. so that everybody goes home with a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. For those of you who took bags of it home last year and never used it, you can bring it back. <laughs> Uh, the other really great thing happening this uh, in May is the Taste of Impact, and we have we're very excited that we have such a culturally diverse community here and a family here, and so I'm really looking forward to Taste of Impact. But more information will come, and then the other really big event that's happening is June 15th is our church picnic. Church picnic, and that is a must attend. Woo! Yeah. Anyways, all right. So that's it for me. Did you know uh, Jovan is getting married on Friday? Um, <laughs> That's so now whenever, whenever the camera goes across her on screen, we're going to flash taken. She, she's taken. <laughs> Don't do that, Chantel. We'll do that. Oh. All right. We're going to give you an opportunity to greet one another and take your children to their respective on your marks, ministries. Get set. Go. Go.
God loves you. He's for you. There's nothing too hard right now. I'm telling you, if you got something on your heart, something you need to touch right now in Jesus' name, it just loses goodness and his glory all over your life right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oops, she went that way. <laughs>
like the rains, fresh spring rains, you come to us. Jesus, like a fresh wind, wind of heaven, wind of heaven, wind of heaven. Blow across my garden, Lord. Wind of heaven, come. this house if you have eyes to see you can look and see angels all around angels all around there's angels with big jars of liquid honey and if you look up and open your mouth say fill me a fresh Lord. and angels are here with fresh oil fresh oil angels are here to serve those who are receiving salvation and experiencing walking in the purpose of God. There's fresh oil right now, right now. Come on, taste and see the Lord is good. Just let the freshness of his grace and his love pour all over me, all over me. You anoint my head with fresh oil. My cup runneth over. You anoint my head with fresh oil, fresh oil. Fresh oil, fresh oil. I need an oil change. Hmm. You need an oil change. Anoint my head with fresh oil. Anoint my head with fresh oil. It's all about the oil. It is all about the oil. It's all about the oil. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the oil, says the Lord. It's by the Spirit. The oil is a type of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Jesus. Mm. 
I'll anoint you with fresh oil. I'll pour fresh oil on your head. The oil of a wild ox. I'll pour upon you fresh oil. Fresh in power, fresh in time, and fresh in quality. There's no worry in heaven. There's no anxiety in heaven. There's only plans. There's only plans. And I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you, plans to walk with you, plans to do good, to do good, plans to move in and through your life and demonstrate my presence, plans to flow through you like a, a violent river would flow through the nations to demonstrate my goodness and my glory. And today, today, I have mixed a fresh club of blessing for you. And today, look up as I pour over you fresh oil. And this oil is fresh in quality, and this oil is fresh in power, and this oil is fresh in time. Never before, never before, but right now. For I know what's going on today. I know what's happening in the world today. And I'm not worried, and I'm not worried about a thing because I have plans. I have plans. And I have plans to invade you with fresh oil. With fresh oil. Because I have plans, I have fresh oil. Fresh oil. Because I have plans, I have fresh oil. Let me anoint your head today with fresh oil. Fresh oil. Ha. Ah. Say thank you, Lord. Say, I received that. Mm. Shake your head so it trips all over you. Just give your head a shake. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not shaking my head. Shake your head, I say. Shake your head, I say. Shake your head. Mm. Something in the shaking of the head. There's something in the shaking of the head. Ah, I receive. Oop. I receive. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Brava, 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 Emmanuel in blessing, the Lord has his hand on your life, and the Lord has got you in a perfect place. And the Lord is going to bless you, He's going to use you. And there's a season opening up before you that is bigger than you would have imagined. And the Lord has seen your faithfulness and he's seen your steadfastness. And he's seen your patient endurance in the storm. And the Lord says, I will honor you and I will turn. I will turn. I will turn your morning into dancing. I will give you beauty for ashes and I'll give you the oil of joy for mourning. I will turn. Where's beauty and blessings in Emmanuel? Where's blessings in Emmanuel? Just stand up for a minute. Stand up for a minute. Blessing in Emmanuel. All right, there you are. Sorry, I got these lights in my Do something for me, will you? Turn. Just turn. Turn. Keep, just keep turning. Just keep turning. Keep turning. Just kind of spin right now. Spin right now. In Jesus' name. All right. That's good. That's good. Yeah, there's something fresh popped out in your life. God's going to speak to you. Wouldn't be surprised if you laugh all through the night. Because God's going to visit you and speak to you. And he's going to unpack things that are for now. Things that are for your heart and for your life right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hey. In Jesus' name. Hey. In Jesus' name. Uh, just as you were standing up, you started turning in opposite directions. One was going one way, one was going the other way. And I just got a picture of gears in, in a wheel or something, like gears. And then I just saw the Lord changing gears for you. And there's something turning and churning right now. And as you turned, you engaged something as well. Hey. 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 Stephen and Sarah, there's a new season for you guys, too. Something going on. There's an un... There's an unsettling happening right now. It's because God's got, got something new going in store for you guys. Something precious, something sweet. And, he, you know, there's, there's steady, there's faithful, there's there. But something God's going to speak to you. He's stirring something up in your hearts and in your lives, and it's fresh. You know, and I actually think it's something you'd never thought of before. It needs to be something that's going to be something brand new going to drop into your spirit that God wants to do. And, you know, he's going to do it because you've been steadfast, you've been faithful, you've been steady. And you know what? God loves that. He loves that. He does not find faithful and steady boring. He finds it ridiculously attractive. 
and he has got his eyes on you guys, his face upon you, and it's in a big way. It's for special purpose, a special season, in Jesus' name. I lose something fresh right now in Stephen and Sarah's heart. God, I pray that you would just drop right now, boom, in Jesus' name. I pray that you would do that right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Ha. 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 <laughs> Ha-ha! <laughs> Yay, thus and so and maybe, but also and for sure. Hallelujah. And take your right hand, take it like this, put it on your forehead. Say, in Jesus' name, I loose fresh oil, fresh in power for a fresh season. Things are changing. Things are shifting. The power of God is moving in. I'm moving from seed to harvest. What used to take time will come forth instantly. Things are shifting now in Jesus' name. Hey. Mm. Things that have been unwilling to shift, things that have, have seemed like they're stuck and will not move, I'm telling you right now, the anointing in the house today is a move anointing. It's get off in the name of Jesus. You got, you got something that's been hindering in a relationship. You got a, an addiction in a family member. You got something that's going on that has been going on for a long time. There is a move it right now anointing right now in the name of Jesus. Just call out to that thing, move in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I adjure you, move in the name of Jesus. You've been hanging out for too long. It's like, it's like you're normal. It's like this is the way it'll be. I curse you in the name of Jesus. Move right now in the name of Jesus. Hey. Hey. Hey, 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 hey. These guys do a good job. Don't they do a good job? Whatever it means, I'm doing it. And I'm opening my heart to you completely. I trust you. I love you. I thank you. God, invade every aspect of my life. I drink deeply of this cup of blessing. I drink deeply of what you're doing in my heart right now. I agree with it. I align myself with it. I believe it with all my heart. Touch every part of me. Anoint my head with fresh oil. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Turn to your neighbor and say, I got it. Yeah. Turn to your other name. Turn to the other one and say, I got it. 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 Talking about the Holy Ghost. Don't know how to explain it, but I got it. Ah, I got it. I got it. Woo. Hey. I want to talk to you about some stuff. I want to go to Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How many know that one off by heart? Stephen, you know that one off by heart. Yeah. Just picking off Stephen. I want to tell you, this is when Peter was preaching in Cornelius' house. And Peter had to have a vision from God. He had to have angelic visitations. He had to have heaven and earth move under his feet. He had all these uh, sheets of... of you know, unclean animals drop down and in there, you know, they had a lot of rules, a lot of rules about things you could eat and things you couldn't eat. And the Lord, the Lord dropped down all of this, you know, meal, all this meat in front of me. He said, look, kill and eat. The Lord did it. 
And Peter said, no, Lord. Don't say that. No, Lord. But he thought that was a test. It was the right answer, right? Because the, the law says no to that. And the Lord dropped it down again, dropped it down again. And then finally, uh, he said, don't call unclean what I've called clean. Don't call unclean what I've called clean. You see, in their, their mindset, this was, a, this was a Jewish thing. This was just us. God only cared about us. And they thought that's the way it is. It's exclusive to our nation. And uh, God said, no, I, I want to, you don't understand, my heart has always been global. My heart has always been to touch the whole world, every tribe, every tongue, every nation. And he's about to send him to preach to some Gentiles. And so Peter goes to the house of Cornelius, and he starts to speak, and he starts to preach, and here's what he preached. He preached how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus, you know, Jesus of Nazareth. Just a person. He didn't say he anointed God. He didn't say, hey, I want to tell you that Jesus was God. He didn't say that. He said, there was a guy who lived near us. He was from Nazareth. And God took that guy and he smeared him with the Holy Ghost, anointed him with the Holy Ghost. And through him, he went about doing good, which is the word, your geteo, your geteo, teo, teo, accent on the O. It means benefactor, a person who gives people money. God anointed this guy to give people money. Say amen. Amen. <laughs> God anointed Jesus to give people money and to heal all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Amen. Who wants the anointing to give people money? Man, I tell you, this, you're more blessed to give than to receive. I mean, just stop it. If I don't want that anointing. That's the anointing that was on Jesus. That's the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. There's not like anointing A, anointing B. Well, I'd like, uh, I'd like uh, anointing D. That's the Holy Ghost. You know, Holy Ghost got on Jesus. He became a money magnet. He became a money magnet. Money came to him. Jesus didn't operate in his ministry saying, Father, give me what I need today. <laughs> Thank you. Father gave him what he needed because people, because of his ministry, people supported his ministry and people gave in to support that. There were times we had the coin in the fish's mouth. There were times where we took the boy's lunch and fed 25,000 signs and wonders. And sometimes you should expect even in your life miracles. Most of the miracles God did were provisional miracles. And I reckon if most of the miracles he did were provisional miracles, we should expect a few of those today. Amen. My wife became the director of the Crisis Pregnancy Center years ago, and they were in a little back building, you know. It was like you're going down, down the steps, down the steps, around the corner, into a dark door, no lights there. It was like you were going back to do a drug deal. And Cheryl said, I mean, why, why do we want kids who are in crisis to look like they're coming to a place of shame? She said, I want a big storefront. I want it bright. I want it beautiful. I want to have it be inviting, have a beautiful place. And so she spoke to her board, and she spoke to her supporters, and said, I'm believing for God to give us a home. And so I'm taking all the money we have in the bank and we're going to sow it. We're going to give it all away. And they went, oh my God, this lady's crazy. So they gave all their, I think about $40,000 in their bank at the time. And she gave it to other places that were building centers and doing things. And then another 10000 And she went down personally and started the first crisis pregnancy center in Jamaica. And did all that. But she said, I'm believing for a wild breakthrough. And you know, it was amazing. I was uh, uh, at a meeting in Peterborough, and Cheryl called me, and I stepped out, and I took the call. Cheryl said, uh, and back then, you could buy a house for this, but anyways. She had got all, all, I think it was over $200,000 from a, a U.S. money from a, a bank on Wall Street, given anonymously. Somebody just walked in and said, this is an anonymous gift. I was told to bring it to you. Over $200,000 U.S. dollars. And they were able to buy a building cash. It was already, it was the Hearing Aid Society was selling their building. It was already off the tax rolls. It was already a charitable status home. She bought that place and set up a ministry. Good street front, boom, bang, here we are. Love everybody. But you know what? That, that starts with having a mindset, you know? You got to have a miracle mindset. You got to believe that. And, and we've always believed. We've always believed that whatever the need, there's usually a seed. Like, I mean, if, if you, back in the old days, when we were all farmers, back in those days, if you needed food, you had to go out and partner with the soil. You had to sow something. You know, that's a, that's a forever seed time and harvest. Seed, seed. 
Jesus went about doing good, blessing and giving and healing all those who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. I want to show you a picture, show you a picture. Jesus. <laughs> ah, God. I'm just, I'm having too much fun. So this was, uh, this was me. This was January 2022. It doesn't seem that long ago, does it, 2022? And yet so much has changed over the years, right? Like 20, it was 2022. I was sitting right over there, probably where the kitchen is. I'd set up a table over by the kitchen, and that became my office. And this was the first day I went to the office in January, and I sat down there, and we were... We weren't sure if we were going to get our building permits, but you know what? We were already into this thing. Then we found out they wouldn't let us do a church here, but we were already into it for 120 grand. And we thought, you know what? We're going to have to do a zoning change. We're going to build it anyways. And if they don't let us do church here, we've put about $700,000 into something. You know, I was believing, you know what? Let's go. I trust God we're going to have a favor with these people and things are going to turn. And, you know, we didn't, we didn't get the building permit until the end of May. We didn't get the, oh, sorry, we got the building permit, but we didn't get permission to do church. They said, we'll let you retrofit a space, but we are not going to call it a house of worship because you don't have the zoning, but go ahead and retrofit your space. So we decided, let's, let's just do it. Let's go. Amen. Amen. I can't go unless I got a word. Well, I didn't have a word, not from the city, but I had a word from God. Amen. Let's do it. You know, so there I was, and, and so there was there, and that corner over there, that corner where all the chairs and stuff are, is right over here. And look at what we're doing. Hey, isn't that great? So I'll show you another picture. Here's another picture. Changed my barber. <laughs> but that's me from last week. I went over there, and that is the other side of the wall. That's what's space on the other side of the wall. So uh, we looked at that. We're working now, our architect, we're working with the city. And the city now says that when you did the zoning, you only zone the little patch that you're on. You're not zoned for the space beside you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and even the owner's going, what? How did that happen? What's going on? That's stupid. I went, that is stupid. So anyway, we're engaging a process. But they seem very affable. They seem very open to what we're doing, so we don't think it'll be a problem, but we're engaging a process right now, and we're going to have a picture of that in a, another year or so, and it'll look different than that. You know? All we need to do now is take up the offering. <laughs> Moses went up the mountain talked with God, got the Ten Commandments, got the vision. He came down the mountain. You know what he did? He said, hey, everybody, you know all that stuff that we walked out of Egypt with? I need some of that to build the tabernacle. And so we do. But I'll tell you what, listen. You can't fund what God wants to do. But he can. And he will. And I tell you, if you'll, if you'll enter into a cycle of sowing and reaping, if you'll enter into a supernatural cycle, it says God will get seed to the sower and he'll bless you with seed to sow. And he really will. There's, it's the Bible. How many believe your sins are forgiven? Well, the same book says that here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to, through you and your partnership, I'm going to cause my kingdom to fill the earth. And he really will. And Paul, when he said, I have needs for my ministry, he says, but here's what I'm excited about. Not my needs being met. What I'm excited about is that when you partner in this, there'll be a supernatural cycle of blessing that will overtake you. And on every single occasion when there's a need, you'll say, I got it. That's what I want to see manifest in our lives. Amen? Amen. There's a lot of problems out there that need Jesus. And to every one of them, we say yes. Amen, Mr. Duver? Amen. Amen. Father, we bless you. We love you. We thank you for the anointing. We thank you for the anointing that cr creates us, us to be benefactors, where it creates in us that anointing to give, that anointing to be a blessing. So we thank you for that. I thank you for the anointing that heals every single disease and every sickness. So, Father, we command those things. We believe them. We earnestly agree with them and command them to be manifest in our lives. Thank you for the anointing. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Don't forget, when you give, you have to say... Amen. Ha, 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 That's it. God loves a cheerful giver. Can't live without a cheerful giver. Albert Einstein said, an imagination is more important than knowledge. Imagination is more important than knowledge. So I don't know what you see, but I see incredible, ridiculous breakthrough. 
I see breakout. I, I see a move of God. What do you see? I see that. You know, that's why God gave you an imagination, not to waste it. He gave you an imagination so that he, by his spirit, could paint preferred pictures on your mind of what can be done through somebody who's sold out to the Holy Ghost. Amen. Imagination doesn't look for evidence. It looks for opportunity. We're not looking for evidence. We're looking for opportunity. Wherever there's an opportunity, let's, let's make God famous everywhere we possibly can. Amen. Amen. It's been a day. This is that. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about this is that. I got so messed up in the first service. Sorry, I really did. And I got all, all messed up and I could only preach about half a sermon. So I got a sermon and a half for the second service. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. Come on, let's, let's just drink deeply and let the Lord speak to us. So we're talking about, we're doing a sermon series called This Is That. We're talking about the Holy Ghost. Amen. Does anybody know why we're talking about the Holy Ghost? It's important, very good. Julie Downey. It is important. It's really, really important, I tell you. The Holy Ghost, your best friend, whether you know it or not. The Holy Ghost is how you experience everything divine. It's through the Holy Spirit that you literally experience everything of God. It's through his friendship. It's through his abiding presence in your life. Any single spiritual thing that comes into manifestation in your life, it's the Spirit of God. You better make him your best friend. Because boy, oh boy, he, he's, my, he's a good friend to have. But it's coming up. We're coming up to Pentecost in a few weeks. We're coming up to Pentecost. I'm going to preach on tongues. Amen. Hallelujah. That was crazy tongues. Can you believe that? People speaking in tongues. I think I spoke in tongues a bit today. I think I did. But I, I love tongues because it offends, it offends our minds. You know, God wants to do a mind bypass and get to your heart to renew your mind. So sometimes it does some strange stuff. Glory to God. I feel Jesus. You feel Jesus? Mm, Acts chapter 2, this is that. This is that. What is this? What is this? This is that. What is this? You know, the move of the Holy Spirit has a context. We can see pictures. We can see things in the Bible that talk to us about how we can understand the move of the Holy Ghost. So this is that. So this series is a, this is that. This is what you see. What you see. It was predicted a long time ago. What you see is predicted. I mean, we got, it. we got context for this. We got promises to appropriate. God wants to do some things in and through us today that we have, have real pictures for. We got promises for. We got, we got stuff to lay hold of. Verse 17 said, it shall come to pass in the last days. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Amen. Amen. All, I looked up all on purpose. Looked it up. You know what it means? All. You know, if I said I'm going to make you all go out through that door and I'm going to shake all of your hands, that would mean not one person would miss a handshake because I would intentionally be sure that you all got a handshake. Now, here's what this is. All flesh is going to get whacked in the Holy Ghost. Even your puppy dog. All flesh. Pinch your neighbor. Them too. All flesh, all flesh, all flesh. John the Baptist summarized Jesus' whole ministry. There's a whole reason he came. This is it. Well, let me summarize all the stuff he did. He did so much, but let me tell you, it all gets reduced to one thing. He came to baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. That's it. And you know what? If, if, you're, if you've got a relationship with Jesus, you're not baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, you have missed the whole purpose for his coming. If you're not whacked in the Holy Ghost and living out of the Holy Ghost and inspired by him, every action, every activity, every word, every thought, wrapped in the Holy Ghost, you're not living under the purpose for which Jesus came. Jesus didn't come to give you a whole bunch of rules to obey and some behavior modification courses. Jesus came to do what you could never do. He came to give you the power of God from on high to pour it in your belly and transform you forever so that you could change the world. That's what it's all about. Hey... Come on to church, we'll give you some sin management courses. You get whacked in the Holy Ghost, you, you don't have to avoid sin, sin will avoid you. Get whacked in the Holy Ghost. Baptized, smeared. Leviticus 6, 13 said, The fire must be kept burning on the altar continuously. It must not go out. Where is the altar in the new covenant? Where is it? They had altars. Where is the new covenant altar? That's it. Put your hand on your belly. That's the new covenant altar. That's the dwelling place of God. Offer yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, pleasing unto God. You are 
This is it. It's not over here. It's not over there. It's not somewhere else. You are. You are the dwelling place of God. You are. And because you're the dwelling place of God, just like every other dwelling place of God, you had to be baptized in fire. And fire fell at Pentecost because God said, the place where I'm going to live and dwell, I'm going to cleanse it with my fire. And the fire, and I'm going to take a new spirit, and I'm going to put a new spirit in you so I can fill you with my spirit. I'm not going to. You're going to become a new creation. All things have passed away, and all things have become new because I will not put beautiful, fresh oil in a dirty cup. Any dirty cups here today? Is there anybody dirty in the house of God today? Is there any dirty folks in the house today? Got some Kleenex for you. You can come up here and stick your nose into the concrete. Sorry, we don't have carpet. You can cry out your miserable self. That's not how it works. You can't fix yourself up. You can't clean yourself up. Here's the good news. I will put a new spirit in you. You will become a new creature. Old things have passed away. New things have come. And then I will fill you with myself. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Well, did it happen to me? Because I still screw up. You know what? Holy, pure, righteous people still screw up. You didn't make yourself righteous. You can't make yourself unrighteous. It's done. It's a mystery. That's true. That's really good news, isn't it? Because I don't know about you. I screwed up in the first service. I had some bad thoughts during the worship service in the second service. I was annoyed. And Jesus said, Carl, pay attention. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank God. He found me. Thank God. He cleansed me. I'm not a dirty cup anymore. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am one spirit with God Almighty. I am flooded and saturated with power from on high. And he did it all. And he's still working, still working, still working on my unrenewed mind, still working on stuff where my stinking thinking still, still gets in the way. But me, Carl, absolutely pure, absolutely holy. Hallelujah. But you know what? The fire must not go out. Here's the amazing thing. You know, you know how strong I am? I can resist God. Yeah. I can say, stop. We read it last week. Thessalonians says, do not quench, do not put out the Spirit's fire. I can choose whether I'm going to walk in the Spirit or not. I can choose whether I'm just going to go on now after that wonderful baptism and that wonderful, glorious indwelling of the Spirit. I'm still going to operate out of my fallen cranium. you got to choose every day. Say, I'm going to submit to the Lord every day. I'm going to walk with Him, listen to Him, enjoy Him. Amen. Praise the Lord. He said, wait, I say, wait, I say, wait for the promise of the Holy Ghost. Luke 24, 49, he said, stay in the city until the Holy Spirit comes upon you and fills you with power from heaven. And a violent wind came from heaven and shook the whole place. And every one of them, tongues of fire, came and rested on each and every one. And the church was born. The new dwelling place of God was established. And we are continuing. He's building his church. And the gates of hell won't prevail against it. So we're changing the world, each and every one of us. Changing things. Amen? So we're not here waiting to get to heaven. We're here bringing heaven to earth. We are going to transform the world, every single bit of it, in the name of Jesus. Anointing. Say anointing anointing. The anointing is the person, the power, the Holy Spirit working through humanity to accomplish a or the divine purpose of God. It is the unction to function. You need the anointing. Don't leave with Bible knowledge. Don't leave with the examples that I set for you. Don't leave with all that you learned while I was with you. Don't do a thing until the power from on high comes on your life because it's not by might or by power. It's by my spirit, says the Lord. And so we got to walk in the anointing. We got to operate. We got to lean into. We got to walk in the smearing of God every moment of our life. Let it burn continuously. Don't let it go out. The fire's from heaven. It's not from you. And his fire will bring a breakthrough in every situation in your life. He's brilliant. He's wonderful. He makes me look like a genius every day. I'm not really that smart. I'm really not. But he'll make you look like a genius. Because when he comes, he will lead you into all truth. Amen? All truth. Are you guys still here? 
Are you still here? First Samuel 10, verse 6. I love this verse. Samuel was out looking for donkeys. Amen. Sometimes I'm out looking for donkeys and I found a touch of God. I wasn't looking for a touch of God, but it found me. I was out looking for donkeys. Sam, sorry, Saul was out looking for donkeys. And then he wondered, where are these donkeys? He said, there's a seer. There's this guy, Samuel. Maybe you can go ask him. Maybe he can inquire the Lord and find out where your donkeys are. So Saul went to the man of God and said, hey, could you help me find some donkeys? He says, I'll help you find some donkeys, but I'll tell you something else. I'm going to point you to your destiny. And sometimes you came to see a donkey. Hallelujah. I go preach in places sometimes. I say, you came to the service looking to see a donkey. But what you're going to get is your destiny. What you're going to get is you're going to get a move of God. You're going to get a touch of God. And he said, what I want you to do is you're going to go down this road, cross here over there, right near the Tim Hortons, take a left, and then boom, you're going to run into a group of prophets. Go, join yourself to them. And here's what it says. It says, then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you, and you will prophesy with them, and you will be turned into another man. Mm, the anointing. Turn you into another man. Another man. You see, when Jesus stood there and the storm came, and he said, shut up! He spoke to the storm. He did. Go look it up. He said, shut up. Shut up. And the storm stopped. It wasn't from God. It had nothing to do with God. It wasn't from his father. It was trying to disturb the purpose of God that they were walking in. And when things try to disturb the purpose of God, you say, shut up. Yeah. And it stopped. And then he turned around and said, I have never seen a man stop a storm like that. What kind of man are you? What kind of woman? It's like you're a different species. I've never seen anything like it. That's who you are. You're a storm stopper, chain breaker, devil chasing, kicking in the teether. You're a kingdom establisher. You're prospering. God's glory is on your life everywhere you go. It's unexplainable, the blessing on your life. It is unexplainable what you do. It's unexplainable that when you walk in the room, everything changes. It's unexplainable. You got in the elevator. There was a lady in a wheelchair. When you got to your 10th floor, she was standing up and she walked out with you. That's because what kind of person are you? I radiate health. I radiate life. You walk into a situation where it's broken and there's strife and you walk in the door and the peace of God fills the room and everything changes. Charles Finney walked in. They wanted to take him to see uh, this new plant. We, we do these things. We've got automation. and There's a new way of creating things. We want you to see this beautiful new plant we've built. He walked in. They opened the door to the plant floor. Everybody fell on their knees. One man. And all they did was open the door. And the presence of God messed with the whole place. He literally had to pray for each and every one before they could get back to work. He went, went to a meeting in one place. I think it was called Sodom. Went to this meeting in Sodom, had these meetings, prayed for people. They all fell out on the floor. They had to call him back a week later. He says, the people still can't move. He had to go back a week later and pray for them to get up. Tell you, when God walks in the room, everything changes. And you know what? You're packing. God doesn't go anywhere today except you take him there. I love where it says, David took Jerusalem and God with him. It's like David took Jerusalem and he took God there too. God would never get to Jerusalem unless David went and took it. There's areas in this world, in your life, in the sphere of your influence that you're supposed to take for the kingdom of God. And you can do it because, let me tell you about Jesus of Nazareth. He was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. Hallelujah. Hey, I'm trying to preach up here. A couple of amens wouldn't hurt. You got this guy, you got whacked in the Holy Ghost. I mean, you got changed. If I went and stood in front of a train, I would change. Something would happen. I'd look different. When you get whacked in the Holy Ghost, everything changes. Something happens. Let it happen and keep letting it happen. Get hit every morning over and over again. Get a fresh touch of God's glory. There's a fresh move in this place today. I hope you took it because it'll shift your whole experience. Things that you've wanted to change for a long, long time, God loosed the power of God in you to bring a shift in that experience. Believe it with all your heart. Loose it with faith and you're going to see transformation. All right, then Daniel was preferred above all the presidents and princes because there was an excellent spirit that was in him. Numbers 11:29 says, Then Moses said to him, are you zealous for my sake? Oh, that all the Lord's people were prophets and that he would put the spirit of God on them. Now, here was, the, God said, Moses, it's too much. You're doing all this stuff on your own. Bring 70 people up here that we can share this anointing with. So two of the guys didn't show up to the meeting. They were still in the parking lot and they got whacked in the Holy Ghost. They're in the Tim Hortons drive through and they got whacked there in the Holy Ghost. And everybody said, that's not right. They didn't make the meeting. They shouldn't have it. And he said, oh, stop it. Stop fussing about whether they made the meeting or not. God wants everybody to be his prophets. 
See, God doesn't want to fill a few people. In the old covenant, God had to work with, he was upon people. He was upon a few people. He was working upon a few people to get stuff done. But in the new covenant, what's the purpose of the new covenant? That Jesus could baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. Purpose of the new covenant is so that the Holy Ghost could get on every single believer and we could, every one of us, give the devil a nervous breakdown. When the plane was landing in India, when I went there the first time, I said, wow, what's going on, Father? He says, the devil's handing the volume out to all the devils. Because they're freaking out. I said, God, what are we going to do? He says, don't worry about it. Just show up. I'll mess with everything. Do you know who you are? The saddest thing in the world is that the anointed don't know they're anointed. That we walk around like mere humans. Superman lost his cape. Do you know the train of his glory that surrounds you? Do you understand the anointing? Judges 15, 14, I'm going to talk about Samson next week. Everybody picks on Samson. Samson screwed up. Samson did this. Well, Samson, in the end, he killed more in the end than he did with his whole life. But Samson was misunderstood. He really was. I'm amazed at how God uses these awkward situations and awkward people. He gave us all these rules, and then he used people who break all the rules to do stuff. That bothers me sometimes. You call David a man after your own heart, and he was a mess. Bothers me sometimes. But you know what it shows me is that God works with people. He doesn't necessarily work with rule keepers. He just works with whatever he can get. He's more looking for faith than he is for fleshly performance. That was good right there. You should hash, hashtag that one and send it on your ex. You don't do Twitter? Isn't that what it is now? It's X, isn't it? Hashtag pastor was awesome. Amen. Okay. Use your outside voice, Sean. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Samson, it was more, was more times it was said about Samson, he was filled mightily with the Holy Ghost. The Spirit came upon him mightily. It was said more about Samson than any, any other person in the Bible. And yet we say, if you want to know how to be a loser, let's study Samson. Look at what a goof off. We'll talk about that next week. Just a little commercial. Commercial. We get commercials on Prime now. How stupid is that? And now we get commercials in the middle of pastor's sermons. Where's the world coming to? Amen. Amen. You're anointed. Anointed with the Holy Ghost of power. Let's go to Luke. Luke chapter 3, chapters 3 and 4. Jesus was anointed. That man, Jesus, had no advantage over you. None. Jesus came and he was a man. You know why he came as a man? Because God set up the rules that nothing can be done on the earth unless it's done through a man. In fact, nothing super has ever happened in the world except somebody did something. God does nothing in this earth except a man or a woman agrees with heaven. That's what it's all about. And there's a lot of stuff God wants to do right now. And you know what? I'm really upset about some stuff. I'll tell you, well, you're in charge. Why don't you do something about it? You know, I'm, I'm voting for somebody different. I'll tell you, I'm never voting for them again. You're working in the wrong stream. Politics is a fallen, dead, demonic thing. We're the kingdom of God, for goodness sake. We're the government of heaven. You got authority over all that stuff. We still got to have it, but I hope they would just quit spending all their money and fill the potholes, for goodness sake. Anyways. That's about as political as I'll get right there. Don't even get me started, though. In my own space, in my own time, I'll tell you all kinds of stuff, but not up here, because we're being filmed. <laughs> so, anyways. But Jesus was, by the Spirit of the Holy Ghost, he got baptized in the Spirit. It was like a dove. It wasn't a dove. It was not a dove. It felt like a dove. The Holy Ghost isn't a dove. He's really sensitive. You know, if you do a bad thing, he flutter, 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 he leaves. He's not sensitive. The Holy Spirit is God. He's just like Jesus and just like the Father. He's not the weak one in the family. Oh, oh, that was weird. I'm, I'm leaving. It felt like a dove. It wasn't a dove. It felt like it hovered like a dove, rested and entered into him. And he was filled and saturated with the Holy Ghost. Then the Spirit drove him into the wilderness to be tested of the devil. Then he came out of the wilderness in the power of the Spirit. And then he stood up and he opened the Bible and he said, I am anointed. You're anointed. You are. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're anointed. You're anointed. In the first service, Cheryl talked about, you know, 
uh, smearing, you know, meat and steaks with some oil and, you know, bringing some lubrication to the oil. And she says, no matter what you do, that oil will always be there. It forever changes what you've mixed it with. And the herbs and the spices, the things you've rubbed into that, it will forever change where it was applied. And the Holy Ghost will forever change you and forever touch you and forever be with you and forever present with you. John, 1 John 2, 20 and 27, but you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things, but as for you, the anointing that was sacred appointment, the unction, the function which you receive from him abides in you permanently. So here's the important thing. You have an anointing. You have the anointing. You have the anointing of the Holy Ghost, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. That Holy Spirit is on you. You didn't get a junior Holy Ghost. Did you get the rest when you grow up? That person came into your life. Boom, he is there. And you are packing. And here's the other thing you need to know. It's there permanently. He doesn't come and go. Well, he's with me when I'm good, but he leaves me when I'm bad. He's especially there when you're bad. He's knocking hard on the door. What are you doing? Hello, this isn't God. He'll never leave you. He's right there. Whatever you're watching, he's watching it with you. And he's like, tap, tap, tap. And that little thing in your gut, you're going, ah, this feels terrible. Yeah, that's the Holy Ghost going, can we turn the channel now? Hello? 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 All right. This life, the life of the Spirit is ours legally because of the blood and vitally because of our relationship with the Holy Ghost. It's ours legally. It's legally ours because of the blood of Christ. So when you become a believer and you apply the blood of Jesus to your life, the Holy Spirit moves in. All right? Vitally. Now, vitally means, like, you will never get more or less of the Holy Spirit. But the expression of it, the revelation of it, really does depend on revelation. Depends on your understanding. It's the saddest thing in the world that the most powerful in the people of the world are living like they're losers. Saddest thing in the world is to see believers who God, who created all things with the word, invested all of his ability in, and we walk around struggling with the stupidest stuff. Wow, should we rebuke everybody today? Holy Ghost, should we get out the Kleenex and stick your nose in the floor? This isn't, a, this, isn't, this isn't like you can do stuff to be better qualified. You can do stuff to better understand who you are. It's not like you can check some boxes and then God will become more powerful in your life. You know what? The, here's the amazing thing about God. God uses goofy people. God uses people that are actually doing evil. God uses people that are preaching on Sunday and touching people, healing people, all that, and they're going home watching strippers in the hotel room. And God still uses them. Even Peter, when he healed the guy at the gate, beautiful, they said, oh, you guys are awesome. Ooh, look at you guys. He says, hey, that didn't happen because of my piety. That didn't happen because I, I ascended to some place of purity. It had nothing to do with me. All I did was use the name of Jesus. But the charismatics and all us, we're one. We think that now let's climb the mountain. Let's get more, more beautiful and God will use us more powerfully. That's rubbish. You don't get used more powerfully because you strive to be perfect. That, that actually will get God to go, does that ever stink? That, that level of flesh over there is horrible. God won't share himself with some fleshly act. God moved because I'm awesome. Paul said, I want to tell you what God did, not me, what God did through me. Paul said, if I'm anything, it's the grace of God. Trust me. And it's all the grace of God. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't get our stuff together. And when you walk in the Spirit, you will get your stuff together. You really will. You keep walking with him, he's going to straighten some stuff out. He really will. And you should yield to him. You should pay attention. But here's the most amazing thing in the world. You can say no to God. Stop it. Not because he wants you to be more pure and holy, but because... You're walking so below your privileges of what God could do for you. Hey, isn't this fun? Isn't this fun? What time is it? Oh, the thing says it's time's up. Oh, gosh. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to leave the rest for a bit. But listen now. We are anointed. The world needs what's in us to get upon us. It really does. It needs that to happen. You can't be more or less anointed, but you can have more revelation on the benefits of the anointing. 
Let me read that again. You can't be more or less anointed, but you can have more revelation on the benefits of the anointing, his person and presence in your life. You can also position yourself to be more effective in the flow and operation of the anointing. You can be more intentional, more intentional. Let me read you one verse, and I'm going to leave the whole half of my sermon out because it's Talladega at NASCAR today. And it's... Did you see how easy it is to step into the flesh? Did you see? I'm, I do that just for an example. Um, I sometimes express a little bit of weakness just to show. Hey Amen. I'm human. No, I'm not. I've got a very big cape. Supernatural. Let me read one verse. You ready? Read one verse. It's right here. It's 2 Kings 4, 1 to 6. I'm going to wrap it up right now. Say thank you, Pastor. All right. 2 Kings 4, 1 to 6. This is a woman. Uh, her husband's a prophet. The husband dies, and they've got nothing. The creditors are coming. They're going to take everything, and they're going to take her two sons. So if you're a widow and your sons are gone, she's going to be desperate. So what do you do when you're desperate? You cry out to the Lord. She cried out to the prophet. The prophet comes. He says, what can I do for you? He tells him the whole story, and he says, well, what do you got in your house? And she said, I got nothing. I got nothing. I got a problem in front of me, Pastor. I got difficulties all around me. I got things going on in my life that they got to shift. They got to change. What do you got in your house? I got nothing. I got nothing to help me. I got nothing to change the circumstances. I got nothing to turn this situation around, Pastor. I got nothing. You got nothing? Didn't your uh, husband, he was a prophet. Yeah, yeah. What about that little jar that he carried around to anoint people? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that. So that is called a sook. Say a sook. Now that is a specific jar of oil that's used by a prophet to anoint. So what did she have in her house? Here's what she had in her house. You ready? Here's what she had in her house. Here's what she, are you ready? 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 Here's what, here, here's, what she, oh, oh, here's what she had. She had the anointing in her home. She had the anointing. What do you got? You got the anointing. And he said, shut the doors, get as many empty pots as you can, fill the place with empty pots, shut the doors from all the negative naysayers and all the nonsense, shut the doors, and you begin to pour. And wherever there's emptiness in your world, you have an anointing to bring a breakthrough. Wherever there's emptiness in your world, you've got an anointing that will fill that and will transform that into the very presence of God. You have, you have. These are stories. This is that. What you got in you is that. Well, if you're in debt and you're in a place that's narrow and you're in a place that's hopeless, you are not alone. And you got an anointing that can bring a breakthrough in your life. So she took it. She poured. She filled all the pots. I want you to get one point before I let you go. You ready? Here it is. One point. It says, so the oil ceased. When there's no more emptiness, that's when the oil stops. So let me just say this principle right here. Demand determines flow. Demand determines flow. There are demanding things all around you. There are areas in your world that need a touch of God. There are emptiness, brokenness, and situations around you. Even things in your life that you are hoping someday it'll change. You have an anointing to shift that today. And he's pouring fresh oil in and through you all the time. You just pour the oil of God. You pour the anointing of God over those circumstances and you're going to see an incredible breakthrough. Because I'll tell you, you know when the oil stops? The oil only stops when the demand stops. And I'll tell you, things are pretty demanding out there right now. And we have an anointing in this house. In this house. And if there's some empty space next door to us, then we better fill it. How are we going to do it? We're going to keep pouring the oil. And we're going to see a breakthrough in every circumstance. Come on, stand up with me. I want to pray for you. Stand up with me. Holy Ghost, help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. Say Holy Ghost. Holy Amen. I love that, don't you? Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Look, everybody bow your heads. Everybody praying. Everybody praying. Listen, if you're here today and you're saying, man, I'd like that anointing. I don't know if there's anything in my house. I don't know. Jesus came to baptize us in the Holy Ghost and fire. If you're saying, hey, I'm here today. I wandered in, but I, I've never released and I've never given my life and said, Jesus, come and be Lord of my life. I've never done that. I've never let the anointed one take residence in my life. I don't have the jar of oil living in me. If you don't, I want to pray for you. And if that's you, we're going to pray that that happens today. I'm going to count to three. going to go one, two, three. And if that's you, you put your hand up very high and we're all going to pray together. Are you ready? One, two, three. Your hand goes all the way up, all the way up so I can see it. All the way up. Thank you. Anybody else? Put your hand all the way up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Hey, I'm going to make one more appeal. You can put your hands down. I want to make one more appeal. You got the jar inside of you, but you've been looking outside, thinking something got to change outside of me. God got to do something somewhere. So God got to come and do something in my situation. You're looking somewhere else for a breakthrough when you are a walking liver. You got a breaker's anointing in your life. You can loose the anointing that will shatter those yokes. You say, you know what, Pastor? I've been living way below my privileges. But I tell you today, I'm stepping up and say, anoint me with fresh oil. If that's you, put your hand up right now. Say, anoint me with fresh oil today. Anoint me with fresh oil today. Anoint me with fresh oil today. All right, put your hands down. We're going to pray for the first group. We're all going to pray together. You ready? We're all going to pray. Listen, you put your hand up. Said Jesus, come in. We're all going to pray. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I receive you right now as my Lord and my Savior. And I declare that I am forgiven, that I am healed, and I am free. Now, Holy Ghost, come on the inside of me. Testify that I am a child of God. Thank you, Jesus. In your name. Amen. Now listen, put your hands up. Everybody put your hands up. You're under arrest right now. You are under arrest. In the name of Jesus, Father, we surrender. In the name of Jesus, we send her to low living, low giving, low everything. I know the Bible says, low, you are with me always. But Father, we decided, Lord, we're stepping up. We decided, Lord, we're showing up for a fresh anointing. We're showing up for what you're doing today. We hear you calling us. We hear the Spirit. We hear the rustle in the Spirit of God. We hear the, the move that's happening in the spiritual realm. And we say, here we are. Use us. Lord, fill me, flood me, saturate me today with fresh oil from on high. I command every circumstance in my life where there is emptiness and there is void. I pour oil over you right now. I pour the anointing that shatters and breaks every yoke now in the name of Jesus. And I command those mountains to move in the name of Jesus. Now listen, there's people coming up front. They're going to pray for you. If you need prayer specifically for anything, there's people ready to pray for you today. So don't leave. If you need healing. You need a breakthrough. You need a word. You need, you need some wisdom about something. There's people ready to pray for you. Also, Next Steps is happening right now. Right over there, it's Next Steps. Now, if you're here, you're new or been here for a few weeks or your first time is this week, would you go to Next Steps? We want to take you. There's four classes, four weeks of Next Steps. You don't have to start at number one. You start wherever you are. Get over there right now because we want to know who you are. We want you to know who we are. And we want you to know how we can partner and bring transformation to our city. So if you're into that, right there, next steps, 10 minutes, you'll get a soft drink, a soda, a drink of juice, a, something will get you through. If you got children, get your kids first. But then get on over. I say, I, I say, get on over to next steps. If you brought a friend and they're not sure, you go to Next Steps with them. Because I tell you, we need these people. Amen. Now bless you in the name of Jesus, the love of the Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the sweet, beautiful, anointed fellowship of the Holy Ghost. Take you, empower you, touch the world in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.